Hi, this is Cheryl Phillips. Welcome to our fourth month of free squedge projects. This month's project is an eight-pointed star block. If you make this block this month and continue in the months ahead, you'll have a sampler quilt by Christmas time. And with the variations in the March pattern, you can make as many as four blocks. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is go to our website, to the products page, and download the March pattern. Then we want to use our tool. This is a Squedge 22.5 degree tool, and we have applied um, adhesive rings, four to the front and four to the back, to our tool. You might be wondering what a squedge is. Well, a squedge is a wedge that makes a square. The next thing we're going to do, once the rings are on, is we look at the diagram on the first page and you'll see pink and yellow lines. We want to put those on the 45 degree lines of my squedge tool. To do that, I use something called glow tape. And I have a roll here of yellow and one of pink. So I'm going to take my tool, pull off a piece of the pink, and place it right here on the 45 degree line. And I'll double check that to make sure that my pink line looks like the pink line in my diagram. Next, I'll take my yellow tape and put it on the opposite 45 degree line, like this. Okay, let's talk fabric. My sampler is going to be with striped fabric because I think stripes are just so much fun. Some people are kind of afraid of them um, because they think they're too hard to work with. But I'd like to give you a few tips that will hopefully take your fears away. One thing I've noticed, though, going through all my stripe collection is that most stripes run parallel to the selvage. In other words, let's look at this piece here and you can see that the stripe runs in the same direction as your selvage. With this in mind, I suggest that you cut your stripes that are parallel to the selvage in lengths of one and a quarter yard. That is 45 inches, which is the same length as the width of most of your background fabrics. So when I go to buy a stripe, oftentimes I'll buy like five yards because that gives me four of those one and a quarter yard lengths. Okay, this is a one-way stripe. If we look at this stripe and really study it, we can see that our design repeats about every nine inches. I'm focusing arbitrarily on the black and gray stripe that's repeated here. That's about an eight and a half to nine inch repeat. If I look at the stripes in between on that eight and a half inch distance, I can see that some of these stripes are only there once. Like this little fine green line isn't repeated any place else. By realizing that this is a one way stripe, I know that I can cut from only one side. One way stripe, one side. For the project we're going to do today, I've chosen this stripe. Now, the pattern calls for a strip set that's four and a half inches wide. If I cut four and a half inches, I'm going to have this much left over before I get to my design repeat. And I want all my strip sets to be identical. So what I need to do for the stripe, in, rather than the four and a half inches, is know for sure that I have enough, but then go to the next design repeat. So I'm cutting here, and I'm going to cut here. I've got some of these that I can show you now. This is my first strip set, which I've already sewn together. But I'd like you to first notice that the stripe portion of the strip set is wider than the four and a half inches suggested in the pattern. The four and a half inches is the amount that you have to have. But if you cut between the stripe repeats, You'll be able to use this portion of the striped fabric for our block for May or April or whenever. It, it makes it more usable. It's a better way of using your fabric. The next thing I want you to notice is that on the first strip set, they are not lined up, but rather they're offset a bit. This is all noted in your pattern. This is the last page of the pattern. And at the bottom here, you're going to see labels. Make use of these. They're really handy. Cut them out, 
and we're going to pin them to our strip sets. That'll help us keep track of everything. Okay, now we have our squedge tool. And let's look at our label. Our label says, use the pink 45 degree line with the words facing up. So you can see I have my squedge words. I can read them and I have my pink 45 degree line. Now we want to use that blue line under that tape. We're going to place that right on the seam like this, just like that. Hold it. We're going to cut around this piece. Okay, so here is my first squedge piece. I'll cut four of these. Next, let's go to the next strip set. This is the next strip set, strip set two. And you notice that this one is offset in the opposite direction because if we read our label, we're going to use the pink 45 degree line, but we need to flip our tool over so that the words are facing down. And I'll rotate this around. Now you can see that little blue line through the pink tape. We're going to cut around this. And now we have our second squedge piece. Just for fun, let's put those two together. I can't wait to see. Now can you see how careful, by being careful here, it makes all the stripes just line up perfectly. Okay, let's go to our next two. Okay, now we've moved to strip set three. Notice our label this time is yellow with yellow words. Now obviously we're going to be using our yellow line and our words need to be facing up. So I'll turn this here. And the first thing you're going to go, maybe, is going, oh, look, my tool falls off the edge. But that's okay because we're cutting that inside piece. And to do that, we're going to need a, a marking pencil. I really prefer this type of a pencil. It's made for fabric. The lead is really soft. And what I do, the first thing is to mark that. There's little slots in your squedge tool. And you just mark those. When we start cutting, I start right at the intersection of that slotted line. And now I'm going to remove my tool. And I've got the two little lines left. Now I take a straight edge, and I've got one right here with the squedge tool. And I'm not cutting off my marked lines. I'm cutting just to the side so that I'm not removing those lines. And I cut here. So that gives me a shorter piece. Okay. That's number three. Let me get number four. Okay, here's our fourth strip set. They look a lot the same, don't they? But every one is cut differently. This time we're going to use the yellow line, but this time turn your tool over and put it so that the, you can see the blue line through the tape. Put the blue line right on the seam. And the first thing we do is take our marking pencil and make two little marks in the slots. Cut around three sides. We're going to, now I'm going to take this away to make it easier. And again, we don't cut off our pink marks. We use the straight edge and trim that away. This is our fourth piece. Let's look at the way these come together. See how everything lines up? Now we're ready to sew a quarter of our block. Here are our four pieces, one, two, three, four, and four of those makes a quarter of our block. And you can see here by pushing these together how nice those stripes line up. See, stripes aren't hard at all as long as you remember that it's like a fussy cut. That stripe, the portion of the stripe that intersects with the background has to be the same every time. This is a quarter of our square. And here's one that's already sewn. And I have another one. Isn't that neat how everything lines up? I've made a bunch of these eight pointed stars. This one I used an Americana stripe. I was careful where I cut my strip sets and sewed them to the background. And that gave me a very symmetrical looking star. The next project, I use this crazy wavy stripe, which is so much fun. It has such motion. Here's one block I did. 
Now I did cut it according to the repeat, but because the stripe waves, you don't get exact matches. It's okay, your eye just sees this movement. And I, and I really like that one. And I made one and I flipped it in the opposite direction so that my stripe is in the background and my green is on the inside. So that was fun. That's in your pattern. Then I took the stripe and I made a star where the stripe is perpendicular to your seam. This piece was cut from selvage to selvage, you know, in the traditional way of cutting a strip across the width. Uh, unless I fussy cut these pieces though, I'm not going to get that even stripe where everything matches. So if, you, if you're gonna do this one, keep that in mind. I also made the block the opposite, again, where the stripe is perpendicular to the seam, and it's kind of interesting. I also made one where my fabric for my star wasn't necessarily a stripe, but just a linear design, and you get just a more subtle design. I suppose you noticed when I showed you all my blocks, I got so carried away with making eight-pointed stars, I didn't do the appliques. But if you'll go back to our previous videos, you'll see exactly how to make those applique pieces. And I promise I'll get that part done. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy making the eight-pointed stars. And I look forward to seeing you back here for next month's block. Thank you. And God bless.